Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all, things, all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first. But it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking, that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Okay. This morning we have a uh, special breakfast. So after Mass, I'm hoping all of you will join me over in the parish hall. The Knights of Columbus are putting on a wonderful breakfast for us this morning. And uh, many of you uh, were here when Father Reagan Shriver was here, right? And what did Father Reagan always do in homilies? Three things. Okay. But well, guess what I'm doing today? Three things. And the three things are, talking about Catholic school collection today, second thing is going to be about my recent vacation and what I learned there, and the third thing is about today's gospel and the destruction of the temple. And so let's start off with um, Catholic schools. So the, the way it's described is not at all what it is. It's called the second collection for Catholic schools. And so if you're giving to this thing, you must be thinking, well, I'm giving money to the school. Right? And what else would it be? But you're not. Right? What the money is used for is to provide support to families that can't pay the full tuition. And as you might imagine, tuition is expensive, especially for families that have more than one children, one child. And so the schools do what they can to work with families to ensure that every um, Catholic child who wants a Catholic school education can afford it. So what ends up happening is, is this money ends up going into the pot, so to speak, that each school receives part of, and it gives them the ability to provide additional assistance to those families that are most in need. So when you're giving today, and I hope you do, and I am, uh, not from up here though, um, <laughs> When you do, think about not giving it to the school like a building or a structure or an organization. Think of it as though you're giving it to a particular needy family who, if it wasn't for you, wouldn't be able to provide their child with a Catholic school education. Hopefully that gives you a little better way of understanding how the money is actually used. The second thing is uh, vacation. So uh, my wife and I are planning to go to Sanibel Island on October 22nd. Guess where we went? St. Pete. <laughs> okay. Sanibel wasn't quite there. So we went to uh, a place called Treasure Island. And it is a treasure, but for one particular reason. 
And it's a treasure because when I'm on vacation there, uh, while I'm Deacon David in Knoxville, I can just be sort of David in Treasure Island. So I went to daily mass, and no one knows I'm a deacon, although I do wear my crucifix, and I can just sort of be. You know, it's not about the do, the doing, it's about just being. And it was just so wonderful to be able to just be. Not be thinking about, well, is the announcements up there, and is the purificator over there, and is the silver, the, you know what I mean? Just be. And so there I was, just being, and God has something in store for me, which I didn't realize, which was just to appreciate our Catholic faith. Because there I am sitting in St. John Vianney Church on St. Pete Beach, Realizing that whether I was there or Sanibel Island at St. Isabel's or some other place, I was with family. I didn't know anybody's name. I didn't even know the priest's name. But I was part of a family being there. And that's just such a wonderful thing maybe we don't appreciate enough of. But when we think about the church, we should always think of it not in terms of the buildings and the structures like I talked about with the schools, but we should be thinking about it as we're part of a family. And even the way it's described, what do we call our head on earth? We call him the Pope. That's the name for Papa. When we think of Mary, what do we call Mary? Our mother. Saint Joseph. Foster father. The saints are like big brothers and sisters. We call our priest Father. Get the idea? All those terms are family terms. So we're part of this family. So there I was, you know, just soaking it all in and, and just being thankful. And it was really all about gratitude, just being thankful that I could go to be with my family, even though I was hundreds of miles away from my family here, but still with family and being able to celebrate Catholic Mass. So I was walking along the beach and I would do this every morning, and I would be saying the rosary. And um, they weren't the most um, pious rosaries because I was counting on my fingers as I was going through the decades of the rosary, and I would lose track. You know, I'm getting up in age there, and so when I go along, I'm trying to remember, now, was that five that I just did, or is, was that ten? Hmm. Because as I'm walking along, I'm not necessarily thinking so much about the words I'm saying, as much as I'm looking out the horizon, and I'm looking out the water, and on the beach, and I'm just marveling at God's creation. How beautiful and blue, and, and the sun, and everything like that. So, okay, so I didn't quite say the rosary just right, but there I was, praying a rosary on the beach. And you're wondering, well, why were you doing that exactly? And the reason was just simply praise. I was just so grateful to be able to spend time first at Mass that morning, then walking on the beach talking to God about how grateful I was for a number of things, but particularly family. My wife and I celebrated 33 years that Friday, and we went to Mass that morning together. And it's not that she doesn't go to Mass regularly, she does, and she also goes on weekdays, but that was an early Mass. And on vacation, she wanted to sleep a bit. So I'd come back after Mass, we'd have breakfast together, and then she'd go out and run, and I'd go out and do the walk on the beach. But I kept thinking about 33 years of marriage and how grateful I was for her, for my children, my family, my extended family, my parents, etc., and just thinking about how good God has been to me. And how, in a way, how little I've given back. But I was really in a sense of peace, knowing that there I was on the beach, just walking with God, thanking him for my family. And not just my immediate one, but my extended family. And then the third thing is in today's gospel, where we hear Jesus say something rather amazing, because they're admiring the building, right? They're admiring the adornment of the temple. And for the Jew, the temple was like the center of their life. It wasn't just the church. It was where they found their identity. They, they were the Jewish people. So when he suggests that this is going to happen, you can imagine the reaction. And then they want to know, of course, well, when is this going to happen and what are the signs and so on. But what Jesus says in particular is important. He said, well, 
before all this happens. They're going to seize and persecute you, but don't worry and don't prepare your defense beforehand because I'm going to give you words and wisdom that no one can resist or refute. And so I was thinking about my homily this morning, and I said, well, wouldn't it be nice if I could just sort of show up, not have to prepare my homily beforehand, and God would just, right? I would just be his mouthpiece. But God cooperates with us. Or better said, we cooperate with God, and he allows us to participate by a human being delivering the words of God through a homily. So when I was thinking about my favorite place, you might have thought, oh, it must have been on vacation. And then in particular, it might have been Sanibel Island, which I wasn't able to go to. Or maybe it was on the beach. Or maybe, well, none of those were the right answer. The right answer was the golf course. No, that's not the right answer. <laughs> the right answer was every morning at Mass. Now, why is that? Not because I'm a deacon, not because I like going to Mass just for the sake of going, but because that's where heaven meets earth. You can't get any closer to heaven than being at Mass. And I love when we walk into our church, and I want you to remember this when you walk out today, because we just walk over the things right before the doors and right after the doors. There's two circles. And the one circle on the outside of the doors is meant to represent our world and our space and time. And when we open those doors and we walk in, we step into another circle, another world. But this world is in God's space and God's time. We walk into Mass. We walk into Mass. And we walk into Mass, we literally enter into the closest we can possibly get to heaven. It's, in a sense, heaven on earth, where heaven and earth kiss, or where heaven and earth meet. And so when you come into Mass, try to think about who you're with, because you're not just with the people around you, you're also with other people attending Mass at other places on earth but you're also with the communion of saints and the angels. And amongst those saints, I'll bet you, you know someone that you cherish. Maybe it's your mom, your dad, a sibling, a former spouse, a child, whoever that is. And remember, the church is family. And that family is not up there alone because when we come to mass we join to them in the worship of God and so I like to leave a little space next to me mom dad my brother Dennis see what I'm saying and think about how they're with you looking out at Werner Philomena well else would she be right what a joy that brings It doesn't get any better than that, folks. Whether you like to hike in the mountains, whether you like to walk on the beach, whether you like to travel, even to your favorite golf course. Now, maybe Augusta is an exception. I haven't played there yet. But the point is, whatever that favorite place is, compared to being at Mass, just step back and realize the gift that we have when we can come and be with not only our human family on earth, not only with our deceased loved ones, but most importantly, who we come for. Because what unites all of what I've been talking about is Christ. We're not part of some social club. We're part of a family, and he's the head of our family. The Trinity itself is a family, the Father, Son, and Spirit. And then we're invited to live in that family. We're not just showing up 
we're showing up as a person that is coming to the family meal that's offered to us, not just as what's coming up like, say, Thanksgiving dinner and turkey and so on, but we're actually given a meal that's Christ. Which shows us how much he loves us. He doesn't hold anything back. He gives us his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And he invites us in as a member of his family to come share in his divine life. So yeah, walks on the beach are great. Traveling, etc., etc., etc. But when it comes down to it, there's no better place and more special place for us than to come to Mass. May God bless us all.